Okay, in the last one I taught you how to be able to change, uh, convert uh, binary numbers to decimals. We simply uh, put the ones into the boxes here and we multiply down and add across. But what happens if we have a decimal number, we want to figure out what ones and zeros uh, represent that. Uh, so what we can do is um, say we have the number 72 and I want to figure out um, what is the binary equivalent of that? Well, a simple way of doing it is to go up and take the 72 and look at our powers of 2 and figure out which one can I, what's the highest number I can subtract from 74 and not end up with a negative number. So if I subtract seven, uh, 128 from 72, it ends up being negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract six, the 64 from the 72 and I'm going to put a 1 in that showing that we're going to take 64 out of that 72. So I do 64 and then that is going to be uh, 8. Okay, so I have, I have 8 left over and I cannot subtract a 32, I cannot subtract a 16, but I can subtract an 8. So if I put a 1 in the 8th column you can see that it comes out to 72. So I, because if I subtract 8, it, it ends up being ends up being zero at the end. See, so very easy. Just subtract, take the highest number you can subtract without becoming a, a negative number, and it works well from there. So let's try another one. Let me try uh, 38. Okay, so I have the number 38. I cannot subtract a 128, I cannot subtract a 64, but I can subtract a 32, so I'm going to put a 1 in the 32 columns, and I'm going to subtract 32 from 38, and that's going to be give, leave me with 6. So I cannot subtract 16 from 6, I cannot subtract 8 from 6, but I can subtract 4 from 6, so I'll go ahead and put a 1 in the fourth column and subtract four. Okay, and that's going to give me number two. And I can subtract a two from a two, so I'm going to put a one in this column. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract two. And that's going to leave me with zero. And as you can see, a 32, a four, and a two is a decimal ten, is a decimal 38 and I can check that by again multiplying down adding across so very simple to convert decimal numbers to binary uh, one last thing I want to go over very quick is hexadecimal numbers hexadecimal numbers are a power of 16 so it's 1 16 256 4000 we see a lot of that because binary numbers are very large as the number of digits in it so we try to make it smaller, and we can't make it decimal because it doesn't fit very well together. But hexadecimal, a power of 16 goes into a power of 2 very easily. The problem we have is it goes uh, 1 through 9, and where we would in decimal would go to 10. We can't go to 10 because that would be a 1 in the 16s and a 0 in the 1s, which would represent 16. And we're trying to represent 10, not 16. So what they did is they came up with a way of doing it by using letters. So um, A is represents 10, and then B is 11, and then C is 12, and then D is 13, and then E is 14, and then F is 15. We did that because we we can see there's an implied value there. C from the alphabet is 2 from A, so we can use these as implied values. Well, what happens after F? Well, F, since that's 15, and X is 16, and 16 is represented by 1, 0. And then 17 is 1, 1, which means 1 of the 16s and 1 of the 1s. Okay, so you can see that. Um, Um, the hexadecimal numbering system, just like the binary, just uses a different power to represent the numbers we have. And the only addition thing, the only additional thing we have with hex, is that we have to use letters 
because we don't have anything between 9 and 1, 0 to represent all these other numbers that are in between. And we use characters in order to be able to do that. So we can do some implied alphabetical math uh, to know that you know D is uh, 3 away from A. All right, that's it.